What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Fireside Giants. I'm your host, Anthony Rivardo. I'm joined by my co-host, Alex Wilson, and this is a big day, Giants fans. Saquon Barkley is signing with the Philadelphia Eagles, leaving the New York Giants. He's been here for six years. Now he's gone. He's going over to Philadelphia, our hated rival. A pretty shocking move. It's one that we've heard about over the last few days. We heard that there was some rumored interest from the Eagles in Saquon. Well, now we're seeing reportedly the Giants didn't even make an offer for Saquon Barkley. He negotiated a little bit with the Eagles, a little bit with the Bears, and with the Houston Texans, not with the New York Giants. So the Giants didn't really have any intention of extending Saquon Barkley. They're letting him walk in free agency, and now they will face him twice a year as a member of the Philadelphia Eagles. That's the first big piece of news coming out of the New York Giants situation today as the legal tampering period kicked off. Second piece of news, offensive lineman, left guard slash right guard, John Ryan. Runyon, the Giants made their first splash signing on the offensive line. Is it quite as big of a splash as we thought it would be? Is it the cannonball splash of Mike Onwenu that we were hoping for? It's not, but it's a solid quality signing for a guard who could play on both sides of the line. 10 years, $30 million. We're going to react to that as well, give you all of the necessary information that you need on John Runyon. And of course, first and foremost, we do want to react to Saquon Barkley signing with the Philadelphia Eagles. So before we dive into all that, make sure to leave a like if you enjoy this episode, subscribe to the channel if you're new, ring the bell so you don't miss an episode, follow us on social media at Fireside Giants. But without further ado, Alex, how are you doing today, my friend? And what is your reaction to Saquon Barkley signing with the Eagles? Oof, wow. Uh, quite the freaking day so far, my friends. Now I'm going to quell some concerns about this John Runyon signing and give you some information. I really dove deep. I've been kind of staring at my computer for like seven hours. I'm, my eyes are starting to go cross. But I'll tell you what, I've been doing my deep due diligence on John Runyon and exactly why the Giants made this move. Offensive guards flying off the board left and right. Robert Hunt um, getting 17 million. Kevin Dotson uh, getting what 17 million, and or maybe Hunt got 20 million actually. I think got 20 million over a 100 million dollar contract with the Panthers. Um, so a lot of guys going off the board, and right now the Giants are thinking to themselves, well, we don't want to spend 17 or 20 million dollars on an offensive guard. How about we spend 10 million dollars? And you know, I'll adjust the Saquon thing before I dive into the deep kind of uh, details of why Runyon made a lot of sense for this for this team. Um, but for Saquon Barkley's case, three years, 37.75 million, can balloon up to 46.75 million. The Giants never even made an offer. This was the, in the best interest of the Giants to let him go. It's going to be weird seeing Barkley in the Eagles. It's going to be weird not seeing Barkley behind our offensive line. But the truth is, we lost a lot of games with Barkley on the team. And, you know, he can't do it himself. Traditionally speaking, in my opinion... The offense, uh, uh, the running back should be the last piece to the puzzle. If you're the Eagles right now, Saquon Barkley is the last piece to their offensive puzzle. They have A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith and Dallas Goddard. They don't need, you know, to anybody else. They don't need to invest in receiver. They have a great offensive line. They can afford to say to themselves, well, you know, Jalen Hurts has a $13.5 million cap hit this upcoming season. We can afford to spend a little bit more on, on Saquon Barkley because our team is very good. Um, the Giants, however, need help across the board. Their team stinks. The roster is garbage for the most part in terms of depth and actual starting talent, aside from a few key linchpin pieces. And they're not in a place to be paying running back. So while I would have loved for us to be where the Eagles are right now, we aren't, and that's the reality. Um, so now thinking about you know where we spend that money, John Runyon, $10 million per season, a three-year $30 million deal, $17 million guaranteed. A lot of people are in the comments right now writing, this is another Mark Lewinsky. This is another John Feliciano. Guys, no, it's not, and I'll tell you why. Right off the bat, Mark Lewinsky was a reactive move because the Giants had no money. He was the only thing they could afford and they were cornered into actually acquiring a player that was never supposed to be their primary target. They just had to do something and the, the market was thin. Um, so the, the two scenarios aren't the same at all. John Feliciano made veteran minimum with us and was a Super Bowl uh, caliber player this past season, was a starter for the 49ers. Um, so yeah, like it was probably coaching that ruined him for the Giants, not the fact that he's not a uh, a good player. Um, so John Runyon, though, why is this an, an interesting move for the Giants? Well, a lot of people are rushing to his PFF page right now and his stats and saying, oh, well, you know, he was awful last season, had a whatever grade, um, 56.5 offensive grade. Yeah, at right guard. Now, let me give you some insight into why the Giants are probably going to have him play left guard. At least that's my assumption because of the statistics and what actually makes sense um, for this move. So John Runyon, my friends, and another important imperative point I'm going to make, 
has played three consecutive seasons with over a thousand snaps. John Runyon is a healthy player. John Runyon does not miss games. John Runyon is not going to be a liability for the Giants where they have to suddenly, at least barring an injury like that's not in line with his historical health, he's going to be available. And the best ability is availability sometimes when you're an offensive guard, especially when you're trying to develop chemistry with guys like Andrew Thomas and John Michael Schmitz. John Runyon's going to play left guard for the Giants because back in 2021, when he was a left guard, his first season as a primary starter, he gave up 21 pressures over 1,109 snaps and had one penalty. He was a really solid pass protector. Now, this is not going to be an elite run blocking guard. He's a really good pass protector at left guard. That is what he is known for. Um, now, what happened is in 2022, you're going to like this, Anthony. I think you're going to like a lot of what uh, the grades and statistics actually have to say about John Runyon. But in 2022, he started the season at left guard. He actually had one of the best pass protecting uh, string of six games I think I've seen in context with the Giants, like basically what Andrew Thomas was putting together in 2022. That's the level of grades and efficiency he was producing. You're going to love this, Anthony. Over the first five weeks of the season, he started every game at left guard and didn't give up a single pressure, okay? Didn't give up a single pressure. You want to know what happens in week seven, though? Week six, he gives up his first pressure, um, you know, doesn't have the best game against the New York Jets, and that was the anomaly of that six-game span. What happens in week seven? The Packers decide, well, you know, Elton Jenkins, one of the best guards in football, is not cutting it at right tackle. So they move him from right tackle back to left guard his traditional position. And then they say to themselves, we have no choice but to force John Runyon out of his position. They move him to right guard, and that's where he starts to struggle and see a downward curve in his uh, efficiency. The rest of the season, he ends up giving up uh, 22 total pressures last season, um, over 1,006 snaps at right guard. Back in 2022, when he made the original transition to right guard, um, he only gave up 13 pressures the rest of the season at right guard. He was still very effective. So that's not to say he can't be a decent right guard if they do want to put him there, but he's a better left guard. And last season, six penalties, the most in his career, actually quadrupled the amount of penalties he gave up in one season. 22 pressures and two sacks is still not terrible um, in context with the Giants have had over the last couple seasons, but Guys, his numbers at left guard are legitimate. He's a good left guard. He's a great pass-protecting left guard. I wouldn't say great, but he's an above average. I'll say that. Not the best run blocker. You know, hopefully um, Carmen Brasillo can actually develop that portion of his game. He's only 26 years old. That's my logic why this is a good signing. $10 million for an above average pass protecting left guard to, to pair with Andrew Thomas and John Michael Schmitz. I really like this value grab. This, this reminds me of the type of value the Giants got from Bobby O'Karake last year. Nobody thought he was going to be that good. Everyone thought it was a bargain signing. Everyone said, wow, like, you know, why do we spend $10 million on Bobby O'Karake? He's not that good. Ends up becoming one of our favorite players. I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that John Running is gonna make that type of impact, but he is an above average pass protecting left guard, and the Giants were the worst pass protecting offensive line in football last year. This is a big step forward for them. This is a good value signing at half the price of Robert Hunt, and I just don't think they're done yet. They're gonna make another move here. That's gonna be what makes this offensive line better. This is not the only move, and it can't be. John Runyon plus a Jermaine Illuminor and Mike Onwenu, and I think we're in a much better place. We're at least an average offensive line, barring injury in 2024. Sure, but that's uh, assuming that the Giants make those other moves. For me, the John Runyon signing is fine if it's not the only move they make on the offensive line. If they stop here at John Runyon, they're still screwed, and they still probably have to address address it further in the draft than we want to, right? We have a lot of draft capital. We have a lot of needs. We want to spread that all around, and Alex, you and I are on the same page. We want to go all in on the offensive line in free agency. If this is all that they mean by going all in on the offensive line, then I'm going to be concerned. So, of course, this is only the first signing. We guys, we're hitting you guys with that instant reaction, basically. It happened within the hour. We want to get it out for you and talk about this. And there might be other signings. So we might hit you with another upload soon enough. But right now, if this is the only signing, Alex, I think you and I would agree that this would be underwhelming in total. Now, I like the deal. I like the move, all the stats that you threw out there. I knew most of them. Really good information that you brought to the table here. Great left guard, great pass protector, uh, had a really high pass rush win rate uh, against pass rushers in a one-on-one setting, according to Jordan Rannon of ESPN and ESPN Analytics. Like, this guy does a lot for you in the pass protecting game at the left guard spot. And he's got the versatility. If you need him to play right guard, he can. So, I like John Runyon, but... 
I will say that it does remind me of the Glowinski signing, and I'm not saying that they're the same caliber player, Alex. I'm saying that we heard all this hype. We heard all this interest, these rumors from the Giants. They're going to go after the top of the market. They're going to be all the way in on Robert Hunt, Mike Onwenu, and we'll still, to this point where we're recording this, Onwenu still hasn't signed, but we heard all this hype and excitement, and then they went to the second tier of offensive linemen. Now, what I do really like about this is if you look at the offensive guards, Robert Hunt just signed with the Panthers. He's getting $25 million a season. Absurd amount amount of money that the Panthers just handed Robert Hunt. Worth it for them. They needed to do that. So, you know, good for Robert Hunt as well. I'm happy for the guy. But then if you look at the other tier of offensive linemen, still waiting on Onwenu, but you got guys like Jonah Jackson, who we thought would be a target for the Giants. He was projected to get a deal around the 10 to 12 range, lands in at 17. So Runyon at 10 million, it's a freaking bargain. 10 years or 10 million over three years uh, or per year. So 30 total, only 17 million guaranteed at signing Alex. So you have to assume after two years, if it's not cutting it with Runyon, they can move on pretty easily without strapping themselves financially to the salary cap. So there's a lot to like in this deal, but I'm going to say, I'm going to stand on my stance where this does feel like the Mark Lewinsky signing, not in the sense that we're getting a caliber player like Lewinsky. Lewinsky was older. He was declining. He didn't bring to the table what Runyon's bringing to the table, which I think is still a lot. I think Runyon is a really good player, but it does feel underwhelming in the sense that we were expecting a big splash from the New York Giants out of the gate. They didn't make that. Instead, within 10 minutes of each other, they lost their biggest playmaker and then signed a third tier offensive guard. So yes, slightly underwhelmed by the signing, but I have not criticized it, guys. I am praising this deal. This is a good signing for the New York Giants, but if you are frustrated by it and this isn't the deal that you wanted them to make, I hear you and I do agree with you to an extent. This is a little bit of an underwhelming move. We had higher expectations for the New York Giants, but hey, Joe Shane's being careful with his money. He doesn't want to blow it all on one player. It's something that I've been mentioning a lot on the show is that when you're signing these players from other teams, sometimes you think you know what you're getting, but you really don't know what you're getting. So spending all that money on a free agent that it's a guy that you've never met before, like the Panthers are taking a risk shelling out $100 million over the next four or five years, whatever it is, to Robert Hunt. That's a big risk. Joe Shane, maybe he likes to play it risky, you know, scare money, don't make money, all that stuff. That's a big risk, maybe too big of a risk for him. And that's why ultimately, again, we'll see where Onwenu goes. They might not go after a guy like that because they don't want to spend that much money. But the $10 million per year, that's a very cheap contract. And this is a little bit similar, Alex. It reminds me of last offseason. We were waiting all day. Are the Giants going to make a big move? Will they make a splash? Later on in the day, they went ahead and signed Bobby Okereke. It was a four-year deal, $10 million per season. So again, in that like third tier of where we thought they were going to spend their money, ended up being maybe Joe Shane's best move ever, signing Bobby Okereke. It was such a damn good deal. So maybe this John Runyon story ends the same way. Maybe this is one of those signings that took longer in the day, wasn't the big splash at the top of the market, ends up being a really high-quality signing. It's totally possible. All the reasons that you mentioned really do stand out. He is a great pass protector. We know the Giants' pass protection was terrible last year and has been for a decade. And John Runyon, still 26, can be a long-term piece. Maybe this isn't the first and only contract that he signs with the Giants. Maybe he gets another one down the road as well because he still has enough time to grow and another payday ahead of him. So I like this signing. Let me make that clear. But it is a little bit underwhelming. So I'm just saying that to say if there are fans in the comments or watching this who do feel frustrated and underwhelmed by it, you're heard, you're felt. But let's be patient because maybe the Giants have something else up their sleeves. Again, last year, they went into the offseason, signed Okereke, and then I think it was the next day that they ended up trading for Darren Waller. So maybe there is another move waiting in the wings from Joe Shane. Maybe he makes another signing, a big splash trade. Let's see what happens. Let's remain patient here. But right now, I do like this deal. This is a massive upgrade for the Giants. Their guard situation is the worst in the NFL. This helps improve that significantly. Even if John Runyon doesn't reach his full potential, doesn't play at the level that he was at left guard with all those stats that Alex mentioned, if he plays at about half of that level, it's an upgrade for the New York Giants. So that's what you have to keep in mind here, guys. Joe Shane going a little bit cheaper at guard, sure, but we still are probably expecting him to make some sort of a splash at some point in this offseason period. I still think that a big signing is in the cards. So let's keep an eye on Onwenu. Let's keep an eye on Jermaine Illuminor, who you mentioned Alex is another stopgap at right tackle. Let's keep an eye on maybe the trade market. Maybe there are some players waiting in the wings. We heard Brian Burns. There's a little bit of a connection there between Joe Shane and the Panthers. We've heard T. Higgins is now on the trade block. I don't know if that's something the Giants would pursue, but I'm not going to rule it out. They're going a little bit cheaper here with this signing, but then maybe they make a big splash move in the next 
48 hours that we don't know of that's not even on our radar so that's really my full take that's everything that i have to say about john runyon like i like the deal Yes, I would have liked a better player, but this is a good player. Could be a really underrated signing, and maybe long-term looks more like a Bobby Okereke move than it ever looks like a Mark Lewinsky move. I'm really hoping that that's the case. But as I keep saying, with all these players, coaching and situation matters. He is still stepping into a really bad Giants offensive line situation. This can't be their only move. they got to add more talent around him. Otherwise, he's going to succumb to the same failures as the other offensive linemen that they've signed in the past. Also, we need Carmen Brissolo to step up. New offensive line coach, he has to be the right hiring. The Giants can't keep churning through different OL coaches. They need somebody solid there. So that's the, my full take on John Runyon. Alex, anything else that you want to uh, add to this? I think that's something, I think some news just broke. Yeah, you're not going to like this at all. Um, it's Xavier McKinney, Xavier McKinney, McKinney. Eagles, isn't it? Nope, he's going to the Packers, which is better than the Eagles. <laughs> that's fine. But he's going to the I Packers. I can live with it. Yeah, four years, sixty-eight million, seventeen million dollars per season. That's a that's a big deal. That's a big deal for McKinney. Twenty-four years old. Um, look, the Giants not bringing back McKinney at that price. They have another big move up their sleeve. And you want to know what his name is? Mike Onwenu. Because I'm gonna break it down why it makes sense right now. The Giants cannot go into next season with Evan Neal situated as their starting right tackle, cemented. They need Mike Onwenu to come and unseat him. And at the very least, if Evan Neal plays exceptionally well, they can put uh, Mike Onwenu at right guard and you know move him out to right tackle if need be. That's the only thing that makes sense. The only reason you let a player like McKinney walk is to make sure you have one of the best offensive lines in football for the first time in a decade. You know what I mean? Like you can't, you have. That's the only choice, right? Like you, got, you only let a guy like this walk unless you're reinforcing the offensive line to have a great offense. I just don't know what else the justification is. Well, you're speculating though. Like that's if, of course, you know, this is speculation. Right now, the cold hard facts are that the Giants just let a good player walk out of the building though for nothing. They so. also Danico Autre signed. Um, a two-year, ten million dollar deal. So that's not yeah. too bad either. That's a big deal, yeah. man. He gets Could. wow. He gets a lot. Uh, Xavier McKinney. This is. I was really hoping that this news didn't break while we were recording. We'll have to change some things. There's our reaction, live reaction. You guys saw a little Damn. piece of me die in this video. <laughs> so, wow. I don't even know what to say, Alex. You might have to carry for the rest of this episode. I'm. I'm not happy. I'm not in a good mood. This is like. I, I don't think that $17 million is any overpay. I think that is fair market value. That is a good deal. I think that the New York Giants should have signed him to this deal. I know a lot of you guys disagree with me. I've made it clear my stance. $17 million was a fine price tag for me. Still is. This is a deal that the New York Giants should have made. He's 24 years old. He's not in his prime yet. That's the thing. A lot of Giants fans are like, oh, let this guy go. Landon Collins wasn't good when he left. Landon Collins was fully in the middle of his prime. Xavier McKinney is 24. He's still got a lot of room to grow. I'm not happy about this. This is a deal the Giants should have gotten done. They should have signed Xavier McKinney, in my opinion. I think that this is fair market value. Guys, keep in mind the way that the money is moving with the salary cap. This is a deal that in two, three years from now, it's not going to look like the big expensive contract that it does right now. That's my opinion of it. I think that Xavier McKinney, the Giants are making a big mistake letting him go. Um, but, yeah, that's that's really my whole uh, take here, Alex. I'm, I'm not happy. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can imagine so. That's one of your guys. And look, the Giants, if they don't take that money and do something proactive with it and get make the team better, I think we'll both be pretty frustrated, obviously. Um, guy I like, Justin Simmons, you know, bring him in on a much more affordable deal. Shorter term is an option, versatile. Of course, he's not 24, he's 30, so it's a big difference there. And of course, outsider, not a veteran. Um, you know, it's, it's a big difference. But, you know, the Giants right now just let two of their best players go. They, this, I mean, to me, unless they go out and spend a crap ton of money right now, I, I just don't know what the plan is. I mean, the draft is going to be interesting. We'll see how they operate over the next couple of months. Um, I do think another big signing, if not two, are on the way. It just doesn't, I just don't know where they're going to invest that money. Um, what, it, it, look, if they make a couple of big signings right now, we can pretty much guarantee they're going to get out of the Daniel Jones deal next year if they're going to you know, add a lot of salary space because then they're going to try to reset that. I think that kind of logic plays in my head at least. Um, but we'll see what happens. The quarterback situation, I just don't know. Like this, this team, look, in the past, I felt like we had a direction. I feel like we kind of knew what was coming, where we were going to go. Right now, I honestly have no idea where this team is going. We could either be going up or way down. Like I don't, I don't know how much worse we could get, but I certainly don't know how much better we're going to get making the moves that we are. Again, Saquon, I always thought was leaving. I think we both agreed there. But when it comes to the safety situation, you know, now you have a gaping hole 
in the secondary where the Giants don't have any money invested. They have zero dollars invested in safety for the most part, zero dollars invested in cornerback. And now you have one of your best players and leaders gone. What do you do? Like, what do the Giants go from here? Kevin Byard signed, a couple of, of safeties already signed. Um, the cornerback market is slow. I know Jeff Okuda just signed with the Texans, I believe. The cornerback market's been very, very, very quiet today. Um, the running backs are flying off the board. I still think we end up with like a single Terry or a Moss. I kind of feel like, Anthony, you know, I know, I know we kind of had a discussion before we started recording. I kind of feel like this feels like the start of a bigger rebuild. It's like Daniel Jones, they know it's over for him. They know it's they know they have to move on. Maybe. Maybe they maybe they don't, but I kind of feel like that in my gut. I just feel like a bigger rebuild might be at play right now in terms of resetting everything, keeping the salary cap health safe and healthy for the future. But again, what does that do us good now? I, I just don't know. I, I can't tell what direction we're going in. But if that's the way that you feel, like this is a big rebuild coming, then your theories and hopes of them making splash signings aren't coming true. They're going to sit tight and not make signings and going to bank on those comp picks next year. John Runyon might be their big signing because it doesn't really affect their compensation picks or compensatory picks here they're losing two big name players Xavier McKinney and Saquon Barkley both of those players leaving now the Giants are in line for comp picks if they go out there and they sign on Wainu they're not going to get those comp picks so if you are looking at this as a big rebuild then we're in for a boring next couple of days and a really crappy 2024 season so I don't know I'm not crazy about any of this I think that you know I, I think Xavier McKinney should have been resigned I listen now you just got another big hole to fill on your defense. Like, you're not getting a safety in the draft that's stepping in and giving you what Xavier McKinney was giving you. You're not getting a running back in the draft that's stepping in and giving you what Saquon Barkley was giving you. It's sooner or later, like, at some point, Joe Shane needs to, like, pay some of these guys, needs to keep these players around, especially when they're young, 24 years old, like Xavier McKinney. These players deserve contracts. They're good players and good locker room players as well. Really good fit. So, I don't know. This one, uh, this isn't... This is one I'm not happy about. This one's crazy to me, but I think that's probably a good place to wrap it. I don't want to do too much speculating on further uh, players because who knows who else gets signed wait, while we're recording, wait, Alex. Right now, Singletary freaking called that one. Giants <laughs> just signed Devin Singletary. <laughs> we should have just went live. We should have done a I live know, right? stream. Damn. Lesson maybe, maybe. learned. Next, <laughs> next, next move is a live stream. <laughs> next signing. Oh, goodness. What a day. Well, Devin Singletary, I like that signing. How much is it? Do you me know? Too. I don't know, but I'm probably going to get about $6 million per season. I think that's kind of the range they were looking in. They they wanted Tony Pollard at less than eight, but Tennessee gave him more. So I'm thinking Singletary around $6 million. I, the numbers will probably come out in between now when this is posted, but that's, that's my guesstimate right now. All right. Yep. Let's see what the numbers are, but the Giants are indeed signing Devin Singletary. You're right. How many moves can get made in one episode while we're recording? I'm not sure, but it was quite a few in this one. You guys got to see our live reactions to this stuff. I think that's pretty cool. Next time, we'll do it on a live stream for you. Of course, we are going to live stream for the 2024 NFL Draft, so that'll be exciting. I know you guys probably liked my live reaction here watching, again, a piece of me die when Xavier McKinney signed elsewhere. I am not happy about that but i don't know i don't have too much more to say let's wrap this thing up and we'll hit you guys back with any more updates on the channel make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this episode subscribe to the channel if you're new ring the bell so you don't miss an episode comment your thoughts down below in the comment section listen to Apple or spotify please make sure to leave us five star view go ahead and follow us on all of our social media channels at fireside giants without further ado we will catch you on the next one have a good one and let's go giants